Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So, in about 5 days from now, Global is going to be getting the top legendary summon banner for part 2 of our 6th anniversary celebration. And in the days leading up to it, I do expect a lot of people to be asking me if, uh, you know, the banner is worth summoning on, if the units are any good, and so on and so forth. So, I decided to go ahead and drop this video a little bit earlier than normal just to hopefully answer all these questions at once. So as always, we're going to be going over the banner itself, going over the details for both units, and also taking a look at their animations. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you guys my personal opinion about what I think the average player should do with their stones in regards to this banner. Now, before we get into it, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Madra Accounts. They are an online store for stacked global and JP Dokkan accounts with thousands of stones as well as some really good units for very reasonable prices. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then feel free to go check out their website in my description down below. And if you see something you like, you can use my discount code TIGER for 20% off your entire purchase. We've been working with moderate accounts for quite some time on this channel and not a single person has ever complained and I know the owner personally so I know that they are a very legit business so there you go moderate accounts go check them out and uh, with all that said let's jump right into it now before we take a look at the banner I do want to pop over to the uh, official Dokkan Twitter page here and watch the animations for both LRs so why don't we start with I believe this is the team universe 7 I think it is so I'm gonna throw on some headphones and here we go. We're not going to be able to do this. We're not Okay, so I gotta say, man, regardless of what I'm gonna say later about the units themselves or the banner, this unit, the LR Android 17 slash Team Universe 7, has some of my favorite animations in the entire game, especially this active skill right here with the entire crew. It's, it's definitely one of the best active skill animations in the game, just overall one of the best attack animations in the game, in my opinion, so... Um... Yeah, like watching this gets me hyped, man. Like along with the music too. The OST is also amazing. So yeah, really great animations there for the Android 17. And now we're going to pop over to the Golden Frieza. Angel Golden Frieza and Android 17, which is the other LR that's coming with the banner. So here we go. So, also, very good animations, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't quite have the same feel to it, right? Like, the theme is not as hype, the animations are not as 
not as hype either, I guess. Um, I do really like the interaction between Seventeen and Frieza though, so there's that. And yeah, I mean, between the two, obviously, I do prefer the Team Universe Seven animations, but these are clean. These are these are still very clean. So there you go, animations for both units. Let me know in the comments which one you guys prefer. And now let's jump over to the banner. Actually, hold on. Let me just quickly show you. So at the time of recording, the banners are 5 days, 11 hours, and 19 minutes away. By the time I post this video, probably more like 5 days and 10 hours away. But either way, we're close, about 5 days to go. So uh, you do have some time to prepare and maybe think about whether or not you'll want to spend those stones, right? So yeah, jumping over to the banner now. This is basically what the banner is going to look like, except, you know, with English and scrolling down to the featured unit. Actually, let me just take that off so it's more comfortable. Uh, we got the two featured LRs, LR17 slash Team Universe 7, as well as the Fizz, Golden Frieza, and 17. And then here's a look at the rest of the featured pool. We got some Golden Friezas, we got a couple of Final Form Friezas, a couple of Android 17s, and a few Super Saiyan Blue Gokus. Now, why don't we start with the positives, okay? Positives. Two featured LRs, two new featured LRs is great. It's much better than your average legendary summon banner, which only has one featured LR, right? And uh, in terms of the featured units, I mean, there are some, some good units here that are very much usable with Extreme Z Awakenings. Like, for example, this uh, AGL Golden Frieza is actually one of the best tanks in the game with 90% damage reduction. And his damage is not great, but it's much better with the EZA. And then the Int Golden Frieza, same thing with his Extreme Z Awakening, can be pretty useful. Not as useful, I feel like, as the AGL one, but he has his place, you know? And then from there, um, I mean, this guy has an Awakening now. He's not too bad. This guy's Awakening is not bad either. And... Uh, I think the other major highlight would be the AGL Super Saiyan Blue Goku, whose Extreme Z Awakening is actually very, very impressive. Like, he can put up some pretty massive numbers, and is also a great support for Realm of Gods, so I do like him a lot. Um, outside of that, I think this guy's Extreme Z Awakening is pretty good when you pair him up with an Android 18, but um, what I'm really doing right now is trying to make the best of a bad situation, because Overall, this banner is quite terrible. Um, even with two featured LRs, I mean, this featured pool is rough. It really is. I mean, just compare it to a Dokkan Fest banner, right? Especially an anniversary or major celebration Dokkan Fest banner, like uh, the AGL LRUI Goku banner, for example, right? That one has four Dokkan Fest LRs featured. This one has two non Dokkan Fest LRs, and then just a bunch of general SSR pool units that can be pulled on literally any banner. And even though some of them are good, I did point out the, you know, Golden Frieza's, the Super Saiyan Blue Goku, they're great, but once again, you can get them on any banner. So you don't really need to summon on a banner like this to try to get them, right? And uh, obviously, you know, there are unfeatured LRs, you always have a chance to pull something like uh, LR Rosé, LR Turles, uh, STR LR Broly, or Tech Broly, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, so on and so forth, right? There's always that chance, but it's not something that I would necessarily count on because the rates for each is uh, very low, right? So you might pull some random LRs, but it's going to be hard to get the specific LR you want. Like if you really want LR UI Goku, the rate for him is something like, I don't know, 0.001%. Or something like that, you know, so uh, definitely not reliable to summon on these banners for a specific unfeatured LR. And uh, yeah, man, if I were to give this banner a rating, uh, I guess it's better than your average legendary summon, which I usually give like a 4 out of 10. So I guess this one I would give like a 5.5 or 6. If the surrounding units were better, maybe I would give it something a little bit higher if there were like some topos Khalifla, kale um you know the base kale and Khalifla would be nice i get it though you know obviously they want to keep it universe 7 that's the theme 
but this is rough, man. This is this is pretty rough. So yeah, 5.5 slash 6 out of 10, I think is the most, the highest rating I can give this banner. Now, uh, jumping over to the actual units now, let's quickly talk about what they do. I know I've gone through their details quite a few times in previous videos, so if you guys you know, already have an idea of uh, what they're all about, then feel free to skip this part, okay? So for the LR Android 17 bracket Team Universe 7, they are a reps of Universe 7, key plus four, HP attack and defense plus 150% lead, or super int, key plus four, HP attack and defense plus 100%. Now, the good thing is that they do give Q plus 4 to the category, but of course, when you compare it to the LR Goku and Frieza that give 177%, or the uh, SSB Vegeta or AGL UI Goku that give 170%, the buff is not going to be as good, but you do get more key. So, he is still a viable leader for the extra key. And then for Super Attack, 12 key greatly raises attack for one turn and causes Colossal damage raises allies defense by 30% for one turn. So a nice buff there. And then 18 key super, mega colossal damage, raises allies defense by 30% and chance of performing a critical hit by 7% for one turn. Passive attack and defense plus 70% plus an additional attack and defense plus 70% when there are five or more reps of universe seven category allies on the team plus an additional attack plus 70% when key is 22 or more. And then key plus two in addition per rainbow key sphere obtained, chance of performing a critical hit plus 7% per rainbow key sphere obtained. Their active skill with the amazing animation can be activated when there are five or more reps of universe seven category allies on the team and another two reps of universe seven category allies attacking on the same turn when facing only one enemy whose HP is 50% or less once only and it greatly raises attack temporarily, causes ultimate damage, and all allies key plus 7 for one turn. Links are Android Assault, Infinite Energy, Solid Support, Shocking Speed, Tournament of Power, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And this Link set might look familiar to some people because it is essentially the same Link set as the uh, Fizz Android 17, the MVP 17 from the Tournament of Power arc. Except of course, you know, that guy does not have Legendary Power, but aside from that, I think they share six links, if I remember correctly. And then categories are Universe Survival Saga, Reps of Universe 7, and Joined Forces. So not a lot of categories, but it does make sense because you have so many characters um, in the card, right? Their additional attack plus 70% is calculated separately for a total boost of attack plus 189% when key is 22 or more, and attack plus 308% if there are five or more Reps of Universe 7 category allies on the team. So as I've said before, man, this unit hits very, very hard. Okay, he can get a lot of attack. He also gets additional crit chance. He also gets uh, a lot of key too because you get the extra key for Rainbow Key Sphere. So getting 18 key shouldn't be too much of an issue. And um, he also provides some nice support, right? Some defensive support and also some crit chance support to your rotation. So there's a lot of good stuff going for this unit in addition, of course, to they're dope animations, right? Like they have some top tier animations, some of the best in the game, can't take that away. But my main problem with this unit is that they are so limited when it comes to team building because look at this, man. In order to get half their passive, essentially, you need to have five or more reps of Universe 7 category allies, which means that you have to either be running a full reps of Universe 7 team or a joined forces team with uh, at least five reps of Universe 7, which is possible, but I don't think everyone's gonna have the requisite units, so most people will have to run reps of Universe 7, and if you're okay with that, then yeah, they are very good, but you're not really gonna be able to put them on any other team in the game, which is kind of unfortunate, right? Like, they're kind of locked to that one team or two teams because of uh, this restriction on their passive, and of course, for their active skill too, you need to have five or more reps of Universe 7 and another two attacking in the same turn. So if you have a team with five and there are two other units that aren't in the category, then some rotations won't allow you to pop this active skill, even if you fulfill the other conditions, right? So that's going to be a little bit annoying too. Um, overall, I think it's a very good unit, a very fun unit, but the restrictions are definitely a bit of an issue. 
in my opinion. So there you go, that is the Team Universe 7. And then we're gonna talk about Golden Frieza, Angel Golden Frieza in Android 17. Leader skill is Universe Survival Saga or Joined Forces. Q plus three, HP attack and defense plus 150%. 12k super attack greatly raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage. An 18k super raises attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage and lowers attack and defense. Passive is attack and defense plus 70%, great chance of launching up to two additional attacks, plus an additional attack and defense plus 7%, up to 70%, and key plus one up to seven, with each attack performed, very reminiscent of the LR Go Bros, and then reduces damage received and raises chance of performing a critical hit by 7%, with each attack performed within the same turn. So in theory, because they are launching up to two additional on their passive, and then you get one more from the potential system maybe, they can launch up to four attacks per turn. So with four attacks launched, that would be 28% more uh, damage reduction and 28% more crit chance. So uh, obviously that's not always gonna be the case, but on average, you are gonna be getting two to three attacks per turn. And then for their active skill, it can be activated after performing four or more super attacks during battle and uh, it gives them key plus seven, defense plus 77%, and performs a guaranteed critical hit for one turn. Links are tough as nails, Brainiacs, solid support, shock and speed, tournament of power, fierce battle, and legendary power. And categories are universe survival saga, representatives of universe seven, joint forces, and battle of wits. So the positive thing compared to the other unit is that this one, you know, does not require you to have any specific category units um, on your team to get any part of their passive or their active skills. So in that sense, they are a little bit more versatile, I guess, when it comes to team building options. And uh, another quick note here is that their additional attack and defense plus 7% with each attack performed is calculated separately for a total boost of attack and defense plus 189% after 10 attacks. So let's say you get, you know, two to three on average, then it might take you three to four appearances to fully stack this up, which would be roughly seven to eight turns in battle, which some people might say is too long, but obviously it depends on how good your RNG is. And for longer events, like for the Infinite Dragon Ball History or a Legendary Goku event, he's gonna be you know fully stacked up for sure by the end, right? And then their active skill is also calculated separately for a maximum possible boost for defense, of defense plus 411.53%. So when you pop that active skill, they become extremely, extremely tanky. And you also gotta factor in the damage reduction you're getting here too. So uh, yeah, overall, I think a really solid unit, a really solid unit. I, I see a lot of hate for her, uh, for this unit specifically compared to the other one. Um, some people at the very least are like hyped just for the animations here and also for the big damage and uh, I don't see nearly as much love for the Fizz, Angel, Golden, Frieza, and 17. And I'm here to say, I think they're really good. Okay, I think they're really good. Am I blown away by them? Not really, but I'm not gonna call them trash by any means because they're not, man. They're not anywhere close to trash. They're actually a really, really solid unit. They're just not gonna be blowing you away with massive numbers uh, from turn one, like some of the other units we're used to seeing these days, right? So I think that maybe is where some of the negativity stems from. I'm not sure, but either way, that is the LR Fizz Angel Golden Frieza in Android 17. And uh, that does it for the breakdown here. So I guess the time has come for me to give you guys my personal opinion about what people should do, what you should do with your stones. And obviously this is just my opinion. The decision is ultimately up to you. And I'm hoping that you know, watching this video, going through the animations, the banner, and the units um, will allow you to, you know, form that opinion. But if you still need a little bit more guidance, I guess, uh, my personal recommendation is that the average person should skip this banner. I, I really think that even though these two are good, the banner is just so bad. <laughs> and, um,. You also got to take into consideration what is coming in the near future. So, you know, if this banner was dropped at a random time during the year when nothing was going on, when we weren't looking forward to anything else for a while, then I would say, okay, I mean, you got the two LRs. They're, they're good units. So if you really want them, drop a couple multis, see how it goes. But 
I can't make that recommendation because we have the worldwide celebration, guys, in just over a month from now. It usually starts at the end of August, so right now it's the end of July, so we got a month to go before we get another dual Dokkan Fest with two new Dokkan Fest DLRs that are going to be new for both Global and JP. And usually, the dual Dokkan Fest for the Worldwide Celebration ends up being better than the anniversary dual Dokkan Fest. I mean, look at last year. We got the Blue Fusions for the anniversary, and they were great. But then we got the STR Vegito and Fizz Boo Tanks, which were just objectively better, you know? So I think the trend will continue this year where the Worldwide Celebration LRs are going to be superior to the 6th Anniversary LRs, the AGL UI Goku and SSB Vegeta. I know it's hard to believe because those guys are monsters, but I really think that's going to be the case, guys. So um, with that going on, and even before that, we're probably going to be getting STR Videl. And for anybody that's been following JP, you would know that STR Videl is a monster, man. She is a beast, and um, she probably is still if not number one, at least top three TURs in the game right now, you know? So uh, you got that to look forward to, got that to save for if you guys care. And just given the fact that, yeah, this banner is so bad. And the fact that these two LRs, while good, are not game breaking. I think that's also another issue with them is that, you know, they haven't released yet and people are already kind of underwhelmed by them relative to like what we expect these days in terms of the power creep in terms of you know how broken units we feel like should be and maybe that's not right but that's just the reality of the situation i mean for me when i'm thinking about my reps of universe 7 team i'm not really sure if either of these units would make my optimal team my top team you know especially after the same name update drops on global in a couple weeks most likely in august uh yeah i don't think either of these lrs actually make the cut for my best u7 team like i'm gonna be running of course agl ui goku uh int ssb vegeta the two ui gokus the int one and the lr one as well um so that's four already and then i'll probably want some support so i'll do Tech, Tien, and Roshi with their Extreme Z Awakening. And then the last one might be a second support, possibly Gohan and Piccolo. Or for some more damage, I would go LR, Goku, and Frieza with their Extreme Z Awakening, you know? So the point is, like, there's not really going to be a spot for these guys. And obviously, you can't forget about all the amazing free-to-play units, free-to-play Extreme Z Awakenings we're getting in Part 3 for LR Master Roshi, for, like I said, Tien and uh, Roshi, for 18 and Krillin, for the Fizz Ultra Instinct Goku, who you can also throw on that team with the other UI Gokus once we get the same name update. So with all these great options, these guys are just like really not super necessary to have. So with all that considered, you know, with all that in mind, I think a skip is really the right decision for this banner. Um, obviously, if you guys really, really want them, if, like, you just love the animations too much to skip, then go for it, right? It's, it's your stones, but, um, just based on what I think would be the smart thing to do, what I think would be the best thing to do for your account, for your stones, I think most people should probably consider just not summoning on this banner altogether. Like, if I was free to play, which I am definitely not, and if I didn't have this channel, then I probably would pass on this. But obviously, with the channel and with the fact that I'm not free to play, I'll still summon. I'll still do the stream. I still have at least one or two collabs planned. But um, I'm going to go a lot lighter than I did compared to part one, where I spent about 3,500 stones for part two for this banner. I'm only budgeting about, you know, 1,000 to maybe 1,500 stones. So a huge drop off from part one, and I do want to save most of my stones and most of my money to buy stones for the uh, worldwide celebration. So there you go, guys. That is my recommendation. Let me know in the comments down below what you plan to do uh, once this banner comes out. Are you going to be skipping? Are you going to be summoning? And if you do summon, then how many stones do you think uh, you'll be spending? Okay, so that's it, guys. That is today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you know, it helped some of you guys out there who were a little bit conflicted and uh, look forward to the release of this banner 
on global in a couple days. Oh, by the way, before I forget, there is going to be a ticket version of this banner. All right, there is going to be the uh, rainbow ticket or thank you ticket version where you can spend those rainbow tickets to try to go for them. So maybe just save the stones if you really want the LRs. Try the tickets and you never know. Maybe you get lucky. Maybe you get one or possibly even both. I'm sure there's going to be somebody out there that pulls both the LRs with the rainbow tickets. So test your luck there and then maybe save your stones for something better in the future. And uh, that's it. That's all I got to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.